I'm Brian Lenskis. Uh, I'm an internal medicine doc. I've been in the standard of care for like 20 years now. The last two, really focusing on low carb and keto. Uh, now I have a direct primary care practice. I'm co-host with Jason Fung and Tro Kalasian on the Low Carb MD podcast. And I have another podcast called Life's Best Medicine where we talk about all the other stuff besides keto. So my focus has really been on lifestyle medicine. Uh, you know, watching the stress, exercise, getting enough sleep, and really just trying to help people get off medications and prevent them from going on medications down the road. I chose keto as my lifestyle because I was struggling. You know, I, I, as a kid, I was overweight. Then I went to high school, I started wrestling, playing football. And in football, I would weigh 205 pounds, but then I'd have to get down to 165 pounds to wrestle. So, you know, just over those years of, of you know, doing these kind of like biggest loser type diets, you know, spitting, going in the sauna, jumping, in, jumping rope, running and not eating. And so I figured I just messed up my metabolism. As time went on, I was gaining weight. And my whole family has, you know, diabetes, heart disease. My uncles died in their 50s. And I was like, is this just my road I'm on? Ultimately what happened is uh, I, I was in Guatemala doing some volunteer work and we were gonna hike a volcano. And my buddy who's an ER doc and another buddy of mine, you know, we're all getting ready to go up the hill and the guy looks at me and goes, hey, you're not gonna make it. You know, at that time I was like 260 pounds or so, working out all the time, so I was fit cardiovascularly. But this guy looked at me and goes, you're not gonna make it. You don't get the horse now, and I have to come back down the volcano to get it for you. I'm gonna charge you double. I was like, I'll die on the volcano first, right? So there is when I really started thinking, I have to really do something. At that time in my life, I was doing the, the American Diabetes Recommended Diet because that was the standard. So I was having green shakes my wife would make me in the morning. I'm having Melba toast, and anyone who's had Melba toast knows it's not that exciting. Rice crackers with a little peanut butter on it whole wheat toast and I would have non-fat pretzels and all this stuff because we thought fat was the problem. But the whole time we're having, you know, hot tamales and, and slurpees and go, oh, they're non-fat, you could have that, you know, and I'm getting fatter the whole time. So when I got back from Guatemala, it just happened that one of my patients, one of my first patients I saw when I came back, well, he had lost 40 pounds. And so I looked down and said, why'd you lose 40 pounds? Because no one loses 40 pounds unless they have diabetes or <laughs> cancer or something like that. So he said, yeah, you're not gonna like it, but I'm doing this crazy diet, it's called the fast diet. I said, well, what's that? And he said, well, I fast on Tuesday and Thursday, like 500 calories, no carbs, basically. And I said, okay, and, and how do you lose 40 pounds? Because if you don't eat on Tuesday, you must be twice as hungry on Wednesday and eat twice as much. And I said, what about the other days? And he said, well, I eat pizza and beer and all that. I eat what I normally eat, but those two days are my, like my days that I sacrifice. I started researching and I find Jason Fung and I actually reached out to him and, and, and started discussing with him about low carbon keto and, and started to understand metabolic health. And so once it clicked in my brain, I realized, oh, if I make these changes, maybe I can get my health back under control. Even though I was working out all the time, I was not losing weight. So that's when I started doing the low carbon keto myself and I started losing weight. And then my patients started asking me about it. You know, I would say, well, officially I can't tell you this, but here's what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden my patients started doing it and I had 11 patients come off insulin in six months, which in 18 years before that I had never seen one time because you would hear people talking about that and you think it's impossible. So that's what started me on my road to, to metabolic health. And once my patients started getting healthier, I thought, man, this is a great career path because they like to see me now. You know, I'm not just throwing another Band-Aid on and just throwing another drug trying to get their blood pressure under control or their depression, anxiety. When you start seeing the whole picture getting better, it's really exciting as a doctor. So I started specializing more in the low carb and keto. And then what happened is at that time, no one knew what it was, right? No one knew if you said keto or low carb, people just didn't, there was, it wasn't on the radar at all, but then it became more of a fad. So people would hear the word keto and the doctors would say, stay away from that. But if, if I said, hey, let's do a modified Mediterranean diet. So we're just gonna cut out the bread, the pasta, and the rice, all that stuff. So you're gonna eat real food. And then people would tell their doctors, like, oh, that's a great idea, but it was a keto diet. So keto is just the more of an extreme of the low carb diet. And to answer your question, early on, we started seeing people's mood, energy, focus, sleep, you know, relationships getting better. And it was weird because, you know, it, you, know you don't wanna really talk about that because it sounds like you're, you're like a snake oil salesman. Like no one can believe that you could have these benefits just from changing lifestyle. Maybe just getting enough sleep, maybe, maybe just, you know, not having a negative attitude everywhere you go, you know, being bright and cheery and you get healthier as, as a result. Some people will say, I don't care if I lose a pound, my mood is better, my energy is better, my relationships better. People, what I find is they'll start exercising. They're not doing it because they're saying, I, I feel like I need, I have to do it, you know, to, to get rid of these extra calories. They're saying, I feel, I have energy, I wanna do something. 
you know? And so that's fun to see that change. And when you see people enjoying life again, you know, when you wake up and you're inflamed and your joints hurt and your back hurt, you don't want to go, it's torture for you to exercise. But once you're feeling well, you go, I feel like going, let's go for a hike today. Let's go do something active. And then these relationships get better because they're out going on a walk together, hike, and then they could talk about relationship stuff or they could talk about what they enjoy in life or what they don't like. Uh, you know, the worst thing is for someone to be stuck in a job they hate, be in a miserable relationship when they get home at night, and then they're turning to drugs, alcohol, whatever it is to make themselves feel better. But when they feel better, they don't need those things anymore, right? And we've had such a fear of fat that people hear the word keto and they go, oh my gosh, there's a high, that's a higher fat intake. But really, you could be keto just by dropping all the carbohydrates and the sugar out and eating the same amount of fat. You don't have to necessarily add a bunch of fat to your diet necessarily, right? So that's the thing is once people feel better and they can get to their energy stores, now they have energy. But it takes a little while to get to that sometimes. So you have to be patient and say, okay, let me trust this process. Let me trust this doctor. Let me uh, you know, work with my husband or wife or friends and, and let them know this is my lifestyle now. And then they're not bringing you donuts and cakes. And you know, so we reward each other because we love each other with terrible food most of the time, right? So, and then, and then again, ourselves, when we have a hard day, and, and the other crazy thing is people tend to do is before they see me, they're like, uh-oh, this guy's gonna tell me I can't have cookies and donuts and cake. So the day or the weekend before they see me, that's all they eat. They're eating everything they're gonna get out of their system right now. So they're thinking that they can't enjoy themselves and they're, they're gonna be eating Melba toast once they talk to me. When they realize they can eat real food that they enjoy, we were just looking at all the keto child stuff and I was getting hungry. I was like, wow, look at all these different flavors and all this stuff. I mean, that's exciting. And plus, all the different combinations you can use. One of the worst things, and I think the hardest thing on a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet is people miss all those foods that they wanted, that they had before, right? And so, if you have a choice of eating something with really good nutritional value, even though it might be sweet or maybe it, you know it's a flavor that you like, it's gonna be a lot better than eating these 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 foods that are there's no nutritional value, but it has all those those bad things in it. You know, so if you can switch and go, okay, maybe over time we taper them down where I don't need to have that sweet tooth all the time. But sometimes that's the barrier to getting people started.